Hello, good evening. Thank you for joining us on The Late Show. Myself and my wife, my dear wife, Leslie. Thank you very much, Leslie. You will be with me in paradise. I mean, you'll be with me for the rest of the, the hour. Uh, I'll be with you for the next hour, that's right. I should be reading out the emails and texts and also giving a little update on last week because we had such an interesting programme last week, not just um, regarding the, the greatness of God and the way that God steps into situations, but also when we were speaking to people about programming and uh, so many of you sent suggestions and we weren't even able to read them all out during the program so afterwards I sat and made notes as well and we've already started acting upon them so if I can just give a quick update because I know you're raring yeah. to go no, with not. all I'm, of your I'd like, like to prep. take a little break I haven't stopped all day just got here by the skin of my teeth as usual <laughs> so um, Quite a few of you said you really, really did like Voice in the Wilderness. I mean, eventually I'd like to see Voice in the Wilderness going most evenings. But to start with, as of October, Yemi has agreed that he will do Voice in the Wilderness from 12 midnight till 2 a.m. So that's um, a start once a week. And Yemi's very experienced at Voice in the Wilderness. So, uh, yes, yeah, so that's the first one. Well, um, let me just... A big Yay. round of applause. I did see quite a lot of the emails myself as well. Yeah. And th that seemed to come up trumps. It is a difficult one because it means people like crew uh, have to be up uh, very late. Sure. And then um, some of you said that you'd really like to see a fitness segment. Uh, Jane and Jeremy used to do fitness on um, a part of our mornings. And uh, we do have a Christian fitness instructor who has been in touch with us and um, us with her. And um, the plan is to actually send her over to Spain for a few days so that she can um, record lots and lots of segments, whether it's like armchair fitness for those who are not particularly mobile, whether it's real aerobics, whatever it is um, that suits you. We're hoping to uh, be able to introduce that to you. So the recordings oh, will good. yeah, start within the next couple of months. And then with the Bible study Q&A, we had a meeting the other evening and I suggested that maybe we ask the Bible study team when they do come, they come about every five or six weeks and they spend two whole days recording programs, that if they were able to come the evening before, then we could actually have a Bible study Q&A. But I've still got to get hold of Derek Walker because I've got a feeling he might have, um, he used to have his own Bible study for his church on a Wednesday evening. So I'm not really quite sure. So I haven't actually been able to contact him yet. But that is our thinking at the moment. I've um, spoken to Tim about debates and he's absolutely up for it. We don't really have the facilities here at the moment, but we are planning on some expansion here with our UK studios. And when that happens, which will probably be early next year, uh, Tim's very, very keen to start uh, doing um, hosting regular debates. So that will be exciting. I've spoken um, to Pam, Pam Munir, who used, uh, she does prayer time now. And uh, she's proving to be a real, um, I don't know. Prayer warrior. Prayer warrior. I was going to say asset to Revelation TV, a yeah. prayer warrior for Revelation TV. Um, but she and Safras, her husband, used to have a program on Revelation called Asia in Focus. And uh, it really did reach out to the Asian community. And that's somewhere where we really are lacking. And Pam said she'd be really excited to reinstate Asia in Focus. So um, that's something Again. else. Uh, in the new year, we be able to have uh, some of the music because they used to get the tablers out. You know, the, they the, did. And, That's uh, right. the sitars. They had a babysitter, and no, no, <laughs> and they had the uh, tablets. You know, yeah, they keep taking the tablets. You know, yeah, so, and they used to put all the wonderful yeah, rugs. It was great. Out and so maybe we could do that fun. as well because we're mm. having um, another mm. extension here on, on one of the studios to give us a little bit more, a bit of, more uh, space. You know, not just space as mm. well because we everything's a bit more green screen here. We're going to be just normal sets in, in the new studio. Yeah. yeah. Also, um, Chuck Missler was, um, it was just one person actually that said they really, really used to like the teachings of Chuck Missler who has now gone to be with the Lord. We don't have those programs still on our system. So on my list is to actually try to get hold of Chuck Missler's organization. Yeah. Uh, because we used to um, to have a very good relationship with yes, them, didn't yeah. we? Yes, yeah. Then it, they moved to Australia. Um, so, so New that Zealand, was wasn't it? Was it New but it's close. Yeah. Oh, close, yeah. there you go. The egg. But also, overwhelmingly, you were saying 
live, 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 live. You really yes. like the live programmes. So we've also been talking about how we can rearrange various programmes to um, to make yeah. more of them live. So I have been very, very busy actually yeah. We took it on week. board and we were mm. at a management meeting and we d we're doing the best we can to get yes. them on board uh, as soon as possible. It might take weeks and maybe even a three months or something before we get the more. Sorted. Yeah, it's going to yeah. take a little while, yeah. these things do, but at least you know that we are acting on it. So yeah. thank you so much for all of your suggestions, all of your testimonies that were sent in last yes. week regarding how you were affected yeah. by various programmes. Yeah. It was exciting it's to very see. Very moving, actually, mm. uh, some of them particularly. So, yeah. yeah, now tonight I've got like a little subheading. Uh, it is like, you know, sort of who are the chosen? I mean, we had to come up with something um, literally just a few minutes before we went live. So we thought, who are the chosen? Because I'm going to be talking uh, a little bit about and, and demonstrating as well through video um, some of the things that we've done in the past, uh, especially uh, with regards to the chosen. Now, you might think, who are the chosen? But of course, that's up for debate um, as well, because many people will, might take umbrage at knowing that they perhaps aren't the original chosen, but they are the re-chosen, as it were, or the new chosen. Uh, I, but I'm going to start with a, a little video that is, is again from my um, episode four, which is coming up soon. And don't panic, it's, not, it's going to be nice, this one, be very nice. Uh, it's all about Israel. And we had an opportunity uh, to do Israel 70 a few years ago on Israel's 70th birthday. And I've put that together in context with when I first was reading the scriptures and we were looking uh, particularly at Romans chapters uh, 10 and 11. And Romans 11 was, in my rendition, it said, this is a sacred secret. And when I was reading, you know when you read a book, there's or whatever, you're sort of, you're sort of subconsciously reading and, and also perhaps thinking about how to pay the mortgage, <laughs> as you would these <laughs> days. And I remember when I was reading that, that I was only early, mid, maybe mid-20s. Um, and, and I went, this is a sacred secret. God has not rejected his people, the Jews. And I went, well, what's that? A sacred secret? My ears pricked up. So I read that again. And I know many of our viewers already know that scripture very well. I don't know whether we can put it up. Romans chapters, uh, well, 11 and verses 1 and 1 and a bit. Have you got that? <laughs> 1 and 1 and a bit. Yes. Do you want to read that, darling? I say then, has God cast away his people? Certainly not. For I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham, of the tribe of Benjamin. God has not cast away his people whom he foreknew. Yeah, as a lot of people which still are still under the uh, misguided information that gets spread around that God has rejected the Jews, um, and especially because they rejected en masse uh, Jesus. But that's not the case as you read the rest of that scripture. But I've used this in my um, episode four, which is the final episode of me uh, being involved in the music industry and coming out of that. And so what I'm saying here is I got in a van and drove all the way to Israel because I wanted to get to know the Israeli people, the, the Jewish people, God's chosen in that sense. So um, in context for that, I have a look at this. I wanted to know more about God's people, the Jews.
Leslie had been brought up as a Catholic and attended St. Philomena's Convent School in Carshalton, whereas I had no spiritual or church guidance throughout my childhood, none whatsoever. And only at the age of 21 was I beginning my journey to faith in Christ and starting with Jehovah's Witnesses. But please, 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 please note that I've spent the majority of my life following more the charismatic Pentecostal church teachings um, than being with JWs, okay? Just want to make that clear. <laughs> well, you looked oh, a bit cross then. Well, it's all got through. <laughs> Grumpy old man, you know, that's what happens as you get older, you know. But I just wanted to make that clear. But uh, it's interesting um, that, you know, when we look at the scriptures, we can see uh, how God uh, and even Jesus' own words were that he came after the lost sheep of Israel. But I think we've got a scripture uh, for that as well. We want to put that up. It's in Matthew. I think it's in chapter 5, is it not? Or 10 and 5 and 6. These 12 Jesus sent out and commanded them, saying... Do not go into the way of the Gentiles and do not enter a city of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Yeah. Now, that's quite a tall order. Um, some people, again, you know, when you read one scripture, you could run off with the wrong idea very easily. So you've got to put them all together. This is Jesus' role was not to go to the Gentiles when he was uh, on the earth at that time. Obviously, times are different now. But he wanted to redeem his people, uh, Israel. And uh, to a great extent, that has happened over the last 2,000 years. We see more and more of the Jewish people actually believing that Jesus is their Messiah. And uh, that's, that's an amazing um, situation, is it not? It's, uh, we can rejoice on that. Um, some of the other scriptures, what else have we got there? I was just going to say that um, when we have our trips to Israel, um, sometimes the people who are with us, for our you know, Revelation TV viewers who are on the trips get very, very upset when the Orthodox Jews don't welcome them with open arms. And we've had people on our tours who have gone with Bible tracts, who have been trying to, they, you know, hug a Jew. Yeah. I mean, literally, I mean, in the streets and such things. And a lot of the Jews got very, very offended by that. And uh, you have to really be careful when you enter into their land. I mean, you know, yeah. we, 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 we go as, um, as light into their land, but we really, um, it's not our place to just, just randomly be going up to people and uh, telling them. You've you got know, to be led by the Holy Spirit. You really have, really have. and it's yeah. more building relationships, isn't it? And mm. our viewers um, at times, you know, have actually managed to build relationships with some people, and that's absolutely amazing. But we've had some um, quite uh, startling incidents as well you know, where, um, where our Christian viewers are very, very upset that they're not being welcomed in the way that they would want to be welcomed. Yes. Mm. Um, you know, it's like, just listen to the leading of the Holy Spirit when you do this, because there are some that will absolutely accept that, but you've, yep. got, it, it, you've got to be very, very careful, mm. as Leslie said. Uh, let's look at Matthew 24, because when we're looking at who are the chosen, um, Jesus talks about a time when he's coming back and there's, he lists all these things in Matthew 24 that are terrible times, and he's talking about this great tribulation. Do you want to read that one for me, Leslie? Yeah. For then there will be great tribulation, such as has not been since the beginning of the world until this time, no, nor ever shall be. And unless those days were shortened, no flesh would be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days will be shortened. Yeah. Now, keep that on the screen for a minute. We were talking about a time of a, a great time of trouble. Um, you know, you, you could say well, that maybe we're entering that now because the world is, has never been in the, a bad shape, not just uh, weather-wise or um, e the ecology, but also looking at the economy, um, another E, and also the way people are and the increase in crime and all the other things which Jesus also mentioned. Do you know, I was at my mum's flat 
um, earlier today and I was just looking through some of her old photos and there were lots of photos of my dad who died, um, wow, 35, 35 years ago. Yeah, about 86, 87. Yeah, he was only 58 when, when he died. And I was thinking today, you know, that if he was to actually come back onto on this earth. He wouldn't. He just wouldn't be able to relate, would he? No. He wouldn't be able to relate. No. I, I was just thinking of all the kinds of things, you know, um, you know, the way things are done, um, the, 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 even with politics and such things, you know. The, Everything's the, in a right mess. The <clears> fact <throat> that, you know, it seems, you know, with, I mean, maybe politi some, some politicians have always thought it's okay to lie. I mean, I don't, I don't know. But it seems more and more that they're being found out, you know, and uh, you know, and there they are, like lying to the people, and the and they're supposed to be governing the people. Um, also, the fact of um, you know people lo um, losing their homes. That they said on the news today that next year it will cut even deeper this um, uh, mortgage crisis because so many more people will be coming off of their fixed rate mortgages. And I was I was thinking about my dad and all of these things you know that and I was trying to think of positive things that you know I thought well, he would have liked the internet and and that kind of technology because before he died he was trying to teach himself how to use a computer I, I do remember that um, in the very early stages um, and and a lot of the cuisines that we're used to now um, he would have enjoyed those kinds of things but he would have been absolutely shocked at the way the we, live our, yeah. we live our lives today. Yeah. Mm. Going back to that scripture again, the last part again, Jesus is actually saying, but because of the elect or the chosen, God is going to cut those days short. Otherwise, no flesh would be saved at all. Okay, so we can come off of that scripture now. Okay, so um, in thinking about this, uh, Leslie, I was looking at uh, voices from Israel. I know many of you would have seen them, but there's one or two that have really struck me, has really moved me to, to tears, actually, listening to them because they're not bad, because they're very moving. And there's one gentleman that I really believe that could have, people could have been put off if they started to watch this Voices from Israel. I'm thinking of Zvi Givati. Zvi Givati had a, awful time at school and he tried to make friends he was at a school uh, where there was lots of Christians in the, there with him and they were not very nice to him um, and it, by the time he uh, left school he was saying I don't want anything to do with Christians but he in the end turned into someone that worked with Christians for the benefit of his own people because he knew just how dedicated uh, born-again believers, those who are enlightened about um, Romans chapters uh, 10 and 11, about who the Jews are in God's eyes and what they are, and they're accepted and not rejected. So with that in mind, um, I'm go I've got a few, uh, if you like, uh, uh, what do you call it, segments from that. I'm only going to play one tonight. I've got, I've got three, and I'm, I'm just thinking the one I think you'll get to know his heart is the one uh, in all of his career, he did lots of different things, but he raised um, up to a high standard and, and greatly respected in Israel. But this is the one that actually sh shows you how much love he had. When he became uh, in charge of a, a prison, the, what he did and how he dealt with his prisoners in showing them love in the middle of the night and when he talked to them is so moving. And we might need to cut this short a little bit, but do send your emails in um, as well, uh, live at revelationtv.com. Meanwhile, Svi Givati. But look, the main thing is to have a pure heart. The main thing is to have love to the others. If I had not a big heart with full of love to people, I couldn't be a good director of a jail. I couldn't be. You go at the jail, at the, at the solitary confinement, at two o'clock in the morning, when the prisoner is saying this thing there, in a very narrow, small cell, punished for 15 days. Take a small bench, sit down, and talk with the prisoner behind the bar. He 
the prisoner will never, ever in his life forget this evening. I used to do it as a prison director at least once a week, two o'clock, three o'clock in the morning, I woke up and went in the yard. We had many cells there. I am talking about the central prison, 350 lifers were there. Every one of them have killed at least once, if not more. But you see, even a criminal, even sometimes he is in personal difficulties. And there are no doors there, there are only bars. So I used to stand there and look and see one of the prisoners who cannot sleep. I had a small bench with me. I put it on the floor and said, Yaakov or Chaim, whatever you want, come here. And he was sitting behind the bars and talking, talking about his children who are, have no father because the father is in jail, talking about his wife. Sometimes he himself, in a certain moment, had his personal difficulties and would like to have his wife near to him. He could not. But he might think that maybe his wife now is with another man. And this was very hard. And we used to sit and talk about it. And I had many prisoners who I met them years later, some of them still in jail, some of them were released after 20 years, 15 years. They would say, Mr. Givati, this evening that you came and sat on the bench near the door and talked with me, this is the most unforgettable night I had in my life. Because director of a jail is the most important person in the world for a prisoner. The director can decide which clothing he will have, where he will work, because there are places who are more comfortable, less comfortable, more interesting, less interesting. He will give him the better cell, he will give him the better bed, he will give him the better. He, director of jail can do everything. All the life of a prisoner depends on him. So for him, director of jail is very important. And here comes the director himself, sit down and talk with him. This is human. And this is one of the best way to rehabilitate prisoners. I want you to know, I knew the names of all the prisoners. I knew the history of all the prisoners. They were a long time in jail. And Every letter that came into the jail, we had to open and to read it. And sometimes the prisoner would get a letter that his son is sick. The role of the man who made this censor would, would be to come to me and to tell me, this gentleman, his son is sick, his wife wrote him a letter. So I would go for inspection and find him. They tell me, how is your son? that the fever went better. Well, how was the operation? And he was so surprised. The director of a jail has nothing to think only about my, my son. You cannot imagine how important it's for him. And I think we had to try to rehabilitate the prisoners. And to try to rehabilitate them is not only by teaching them a profession, which is important. Well, there are many other things. And if there is no humanity, then whatever you do in jail will not help. If you allow me to tell you a short story, then uh, if you don't want to give it to your viewer, you can take it off. I had two prisoners convicted for life because they have shot somebody for political reasons. There was no reason. They, they were not involved in politics. Somebody came in the last minute and incited them. He said, this man is a traitor. He should be killed. And they brought them to jail. One of them is a son uh, of a very, very rich father who left his wife, the mother of this boy, when he was eight years old. The father was very rich. He left the mother with two children 
without a cent to live, and the mother had to work very hard to educate the children. And he never took care about his children. Now when the boy came to jail, after a long time, we made a show where the prisoners were acting. But it was a psychodrama show where I gave to, ev together with the psychologist, of course, we gave to every prisoner a role in this show that was equ nearly equivalent to what he did in life. And this enabled him, in the show he can say whatever he wants. Privately, when he talks with you, he's closed. He cannot admit things. He cannot talk about things. And uh, we gave him a part in the show where he said, these children had to be bitten all their life because they are bad. At the end of the show, he said, it is not the fault of the children. Maybe the father should be punished. And I have invited the father of this boy to come to see the show. I called him and I said, your son is convicted for life. He is here for nine months. You never came to visit him. You must come. And he came. And I appointed a social welfare to sit and to see his reaction only in the moment that the boy will say this. Father Sue. I said, I want you to see him and tell me exactly what do you think. And when the moment came, he was shocked. When we had finished the show and everyone went home, he said, Mr. Givati, I would like to talk with you. I was very impressed by the show. And what I want from you is to tell you that, excuse me, to tell you that I am ready to cover all the expenses of the drama group, which cost a lot of money. And I said, you know what, mister, we really are out of budget. We have no money. But I need from you another great thing that you can contribute to the prison. And he said, what was it? By all means. He said, come once a week and stay with your son for half an hour because he loves you, he needs you. He's uh, insecure and you can help him. This boy is 25 years, he has at least other seven, 50 to 70 years to live. You can help him, please come. And I saw his tears in his eyes and after a few minutes, he gave me his hand and left without saying shalom. But he never came back to jail. And I don't know who was the killer, the boy who killed this political man, or the father who killed the boy. And Hebrew there is a say that the one who saved one soul of Israel as if he have saved all the world, I have the feeling that I have saved all the world many times by saving a lot of young delinquents. And my last day, I want to know that I did something for my nation. I did something for the young children. And I did something for Jews and Christians to bring them closer. And with that, I have fulfilled my role in this world, not only to eat, and to sleep, but to do other things. And I thank you very much for inviting me to speak here. And if I can say a word to the English people, I spent three and a half months in England, most of them in London, but I travel all over the places. And I have learned in the, at the Wakefield High officers course, and I have wonderful, wonderful memories of every day that I was there. And for that, after so many years, I would like to thank you again for the hospitality, for the friendship, and for the help you gave me. Thank you very much, and shalom to everybody. Thank you, Svi.
yeah, it's very blessing. Uh, it's good man, and there's there's lots of little stories in that Voices of Israel with V Givati, and I'd love you to be able to uh, next time that comes on your screen or go, get on uh, line as well, uh, catch up. V Givati, Voices from Israel, and you you'll get something else out of V, which is quite uh, moving, and lovely. Okay. Um um, Adam says, hi Howard and Leslie, we are an Israeli family and there is definitely a need to share the good news with Jews all over the world. As Howard says though, it must be done, led by the Spirit and done with sensitivity. Oh, wow. Ultimately, mm. people need to hear the good news. Yes. Absolutely. I think that's what I was trying to get across, that you can't just take the bull by the horns and, yes. uh, yeah. and go raging in. Um, Judith says, good evening, Howard and Leslie. Howard, I'm delighted with the ethos of the programme. You are saying things that lots of people need to hear. I've watched that interview many times and I never tire of it. Shalom and many blessings. And then Les says, I remember when sitting at a meal in a hotel on the Revelation TV tour. An elderly couple was sitting at the table. I was wearing a Star of David, and when the woman noticed it, she seemed to speak in Hebrew, asking a question. When I said, I'm a Christian, her countenance changed, and she became very angry, perhaps just as well. Um, I didn't understand what she was saying. She got up and left the table. Her husband apologized and followed her. I was not angry at her. I felt only love towards her, as you don't know her history and what people did during the war that she thought were Christians. Exactly. We don't know yes. people's backgrounds. Exactly. Mm. Love. OK, I've got um, also some, I suppose, we're, again, we're, we're doing para, a parallel show where yes. people are talking about programme ideas. Yeah. So That's OK. Let well, me it's read live, those out as you know. well. Yeah. Uh, Satinda says, so glad to hear that Voice in the Wilderness is to return. This is such great news. I'm sure Pastor Yemi will do a great job too, as he's more than qualified. The enemy is very active at this time, targeting the vulnerable mm. in the early hours. Let's pray that God will use this program to bring in his harvest. Those who belong to him, but yet to, to come to know him, to stir their hearts to tune in and be brought into the mm -hmm. fold. May God pour out his blessings and anointing on this wonderful program. That's great. Myra says, so pleased to hear you mention exercise programs for the elderly, sitting down, for instance, for those who are immobile. Could you also remember those who are hard of hearing? What? And Sorry. She says, for instance, presenters. She says, if you're in a joint situation, some of you presenters have a tendency to chat to one another and forget that you're also speaking to the viewers. Please take a good breath before each sentence and do not let your voice die away at the end of a sentence. Use your tongue, teeth and lips. Uh, Breeder tells me that, like me, Cyril was a teacher of speech and drama. She says, for instance, um, I don't watch the Tree of Life programme because he speaks too quickly for, him, for me. I only understand the occasional word. Um, I really missed our Sunday services during the summer as I cannot get out to church physically. I had to rely on various preachers. Thank you for looking widely at all the programming. I look forward to seeing what you come up with. Absolutely. Um, I love this discussion and the scriptures you are showing us viewers. Let's have more of this. Uh, would someone else accompany Yemi on Voice in the Wilderness? I'm looking forward to the debates with Tim. The problem with the programmes in Spain is we have very, very few presenters. We, we have more choice here. Mm. Um, we'll so. be sharing them because the thing is that uh, I, I would like to do some voice in wilderness uh, and, and I'm sure other presenters will as well. So yep. we'll be able to share that. Um, but it's a matter of, you know, we're going from one end of the day, like today I had to, mm. I got up at, I didn't have to get up, but I got up because I couldn't sleep at 4.30 and I worked for three hours, came back to bed, had a, an hour of sleep and we're still going. And, and I think... Some of us were on our mornings today. Oh, Did I you heard. watch? Yes. No, I didn't. Oh, you really I was resting, missed... resting, darling. You really <laughs> missed a good And then I got back to editing again and just <laughs> by the skin of my teeth, I got, onto the, got here um, to get those little segments to you as well because they take a while to do. 
You're right, Leslie, we just have to be the light for the Jewish people, mm. pray for Jerusalem. A smile and general chat with them will be like a seed sown in their hearts. Mm. Sometimes faith is the key. Leslie, I really enjoyed our mornings. You and Lorna lighten up the programme. We really <laughs> did. You are a laugh, aren't We you? really did. We had yeah. a really good time on our mornings. We do enjoy our, our mornings together. <laughs> I'm just, it's okay. <laughs> Michael says, evening to you, just to say we received a letter from you with the weekly magazine saying you're moving your office to the UK. Does this mean you're closing your new studio in Spain? OK, so I know that Gordon has already explained it, but this is an evening programme. Let me explain. So the office was in Spain, but we also have an office in the Midlands here, which Pam runs so all of your posts all of your wonderful donations your checks all of your requests for books and cds and everything go to pam in an office here in the uk and she dispatches all of those and then we had siva full time in the office in spain and then we have sylvia monday tuesdays and wednesdays but siva's left hang on i haven't finished oh, yet just letting you know in case you had forgotten siva hasn't left well she's siva leaving relocated back to the UK in February because she and Hugh are going to be going to live in Barbados, which is um, Hugh's um, home country, I suppose you would call it. So she is leaving. And because of that, you probably saw us um, putting an ad out for people in Spain to apply um, for the office position. We just didn't get anybody suitable. We absolutely didn't. So it didn't make sense to continue to try and make Spain happen as far as the office is concerned. Because we needed to yeah. have so someone. We, it's mm. easy here. We put out um, a message and immediately Inundated we got with loads applications. of people. That's yeah. right. So, yes. Yeah, and we got a new person that's starting next week. On Monday, Merle. Merle. And Siva Who's from Barbados. Barbados. Well, Siva's enough. going to Barbados and Merle yeah. has, Fluck has come in just five years ago from Barbados. So that that's the reason, basically. I mean, Siva's been working here from her little office in her, uh, in her home on Thursdays and Fridays About for the last months? six months or so, since is February. It? Yeah. No, is it? Absolutely. That? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gosh, okay. Yeah. So right. really, it's sort of, um, it, it, it's no big deal, really. We were going to have a full-time person over there to work with Sylvia, but we're actually going to have a full-time person easier to do here. it here. Yeah. So and it means also um, you, Gordon and Lorna, are, yeah. are part of the office as well when you're here. But what th the problem is too, you know, you've got this 90-day uh, rule, you know? That, <laughs> exactly. Uh, I know. I was talking about that this oh, morning. I know. I mean, Spain um, mm. docks your, your hours and things. When you went through last time, did, what did they say to you when you got passport control? He said to me, no, 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 no. I said, oh, yes. <laughs> And uh, he said, no, he said, 90 days, 90 days. And I said, I think I have a few days left. And he was showing me on my passport all these stamps, 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 stamps. And he was putting his hands up. I thought, oh, no, he's not going to let me in. And then eventually he said to me, oh, go, 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 go. And yeah. I came in. And so then I had to go over, I think it was for a time for revelation. And I stayed about nine or 10 days. And then I came back. But through the summer, I have not, since July, I have not been to Spain because I'm waiting for my days to uh, mount up again. Yeah. So I'm going at the end of September. So uh, it's regulated, so you can't really be regulated. over there yeah. Um, yeah. as much as you, you used to be yeah. um, before Brexit. Yeah, absolutely. OK, so... Well, it's nice to meet you. Where would you like to go from here? Um, well, it's, yeah, we've got 15 mm. minutes. Maybe we could mm. show that short clip of... Um, of uh, that we've got of V. Give us an, an, a, a few more minutes. It's about three minutes, is it? Okay. Six minutes. Can there you, you bear go. with us? Six got, minutes? Yeah. Let's have a look at V. He's mm. talking about uh, something else which was of interest. There's too many to go into right now. Have a look at mm. this short clip. And if there is any meaning, any meaning in the Bible of comfort, comfort ye my people, is the lectures that I am giving to Jews about the Christian embassy and the work that the Christian embassy is doing in, in Israel.
wonderful personal friend, but you're also a true patriot of Israel. And you bring here so many of Israel's friends. And I simply want to say from my heart, from Sarah's heart, Tadaba, thank you. And the state of Israel salutes you. You could see. You know what? I will try to, to demonstrate you. I don't know how to say it. How it is. When I come to a place, the Israelis are sitting around the table. This man is coming to tell us all sorts of stories of questions. <laughs> what can be interesting in such a thing? And you could see the sarcasm on their face. And sometimes you see somebody is looking on the roof and the other one is writing, the other one is holding a newspaper on the table. Ooh, okay. He was invited to a lecture, so he came. It's a small place. There are no lectures every day, so he came. And after a few minutes, the one who was looking on the roof started to look at me. The one who was reading the newspaper stopped to read the newspaper and look at me. And after 20 minutes, you see the red eyes and the tears start at the beginning, one, then one, and then they start to have the handkerchief. And I have always, always the same question. Three, this is a wonderful story. Why did we not know about it before? And I am I, maybe I got my blood pressure because of the Israeli television, the Israeli newspaper, who never liked to write, not about the good things that the Christians are doing, but anything good that is done in this country. When you take the newspaper, here is a murder, here is a killer, here is uh, somebody who has stolen money from poor people. Good things, they don't write. And, and Coming, me coming to speak in, church, in, in, in houses, in synagogues, in groups, in halls, I go all over the places. And I tell them, the Bible said, comfort, comfort ye my people. This is the main reason why the embassy exists, to comfort us, all Jews and Israelis. And they, I, I know, I talk in one place and immediately those people, some of them will immediately prepare me another lecture in another place. And I go to speak, I am not uh, getting any money for the work, you know, free of charge is doing it. Because I think it's very important for them to know you have Christian friends. See. <coughs> How, how deep is your own faith? What does God mean to you? Look, I am a Jew, uh, and I believe in Judaism. I didn't change my faith. I changed my attitude toward Christians. And I think that we are all children of God. And there is one God in the world. There are no two gods in the world. There is only one. I don't know who is right, the Christians or the Jews. When the Messiah will come, we will stand on the Mount of Olive and we will wait for him. And we will ask him, what's your name? If he said Jesus, all the Jews will become Christians. If he says Ben David, all the Christians will become Jews. But then there is another point, a little bit laughing saying, but he might tell you, my name is Jesus, but I was a Jew and I am still a Jew. This is also possible. Do you see the attachment to perhaps the fact that now Israel is a nation that it hasn't been for over 2,000 years? Do you see any significance between that and the coming of the Messiah? I don't think the Messiah would have come when there is a, a tribe of people sitting here. Israel was once a great nation. Now you know how many great nations were the Greek and the Roman and other countries. Where are they? Where are they all? 
Germany has taken three quarters of Europe. Where is Germany today? If not, the European the American would help them. It was nothing. Russia, the big empire, where is it now? But the single small nation, six million have been killed. And it raises up again. It's only the will of God who made it. Wow, yeah. Um, I'd like to read uh, from Romans 11, uh, from verse 25. Uh, have you put that scripture up for me, please, Nathan? Thank you. Leslie? For I do not desire, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery, lest you should be wise in your own opinion, that blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles has come in. And so all Israel will be saved, as it is written, the deliverer will come out of Zion and he will turn away ungodliness from Jacob. For this is my covenant with them when I take away their sins. Yeah, amazing scripture. Mm. And the whole of Romans 11 is well worth reading um, because it even gives a little bit of um, a stick to the Christians, you know, because we become a little bit arrogant, <laughs> thinking that we've replaced Israel. Uh, we can see that one. Well, there's a reads. whole movement, isn't there? They call it replacement theology. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's not just some people. I mean, a big, big movement of those who feel that the church is the, the new Israel and that the Jewish people have totally missed the boat. Yeah, which mm. is just not true. And of course, who wrote this? Of course, the Apostle Paul, one of the greatest of all learned Jews of his time. And uh, he was certainly very poignant about um, how we should uh, have humility as Christians, and especially when we're representing um, and letting them and sharing with the Jew uh, what uh, the scriptures are saying with regards to the coming of the Messiah and uh, that he has engaged also with us as Gentiles. Because even though Jesus went to the Jews first, uh, the lost sheep of Israel, he says that he's going now to open up to the churches. And we read that in the book of Revelation. We can see that uh, with the, uh, is it the seven uh, churches of like Laodicea and Pergamum and all of that, uh, where we, he actually sees the sort of uh, typifies some of the churches of our day. And uh, it certainly is a warning there as well about how we are to get out of our lethargy, but also at the same time, not just think uh, that uh, we can just, you know, take it easy and lay back and also not to accept the changes that the world is trying to put upon us. And there's never been a time uh, in my lifetime where I've seen that Christians are under fire uh, for their beliefs in scripture. And it's the scripture that actually uh, corrects and disciplines people and, um, and out of love as well. It's not that God is an ogre in any way. He wants to redeem us. And we have that through the, the Messiah and through the blood of Jesus Christ. So an amazing opportunity for a great future. When we look at the way the world is now and all the problems it has, my goodness, we have a way out because there is that new heaven and new earth, which I have gone on about all my life, and um, it was the one scripture that really stood out to me, Revelation 21. And I used to share that. You remember Flo? I do. You met Flo, I didn't do. you, many years ago when mm. I first met you, 40 years ago. In the block ago. of flats. Yeah. yeah. When I shared that, knocked on her door and just said, <laughs> I want to share Revelation chapter 21 with you. Mm -hmm. She burst into tears. Oh, bless her. You know, because mm. with the right heart, the right person at the right time, mm. you know, scriptures actually do uh, just hit the heart and the spirit of a person. Well, how are we going to go from uh, Revelation 21 back to keep fit? <laughs> All right, are we? Okay. So Martin says, uh, please forgive me my negativity, but I feel that any type of keep fit production is not really fitting for Revelation TV. It's as though one is clutching at straws to fill airtime. No, I, you know, I mean, but that, I mean, obviously Wait, that's is... your, yeah. Uh, we could <laughs> gladly just show repeats. You know, we don't want to just feel it. No, time. no. It's, I mean, we used to do Keep Fit and we just had a segment 
in mm. our mornings and people really did join in because uh, you know there'll just... be programs that people don't like well, that's okay but there'll be people that do want a, a variety and yeah. things that are practical and I think mm. in this day and age we need to look after our health and one of the ways of doing that yeah. is keeping fit yeah okay he says I feel there's a time and a place for health and fitness advice however fun it may seem but um he, oh, okay, he just means that there, there's a time and a place. Personally, he says, I do miss the live Twilight Zone programme as one feels left out of the topic and conversation. The reason we actually started to what we call pre-record Twilight Zone is because very often Yemi has guests by Skype and when he's speaking to people in far off countries, you can just lose the Skype connection. It causes absolute panic in the control room. Mm -hmm. and, um, and poor Yemi left with, with no guest. And then we have to try to get them back. And to be doing that in a live program, is, it's, it's just not practical at all. And that's why... Um, There's he, always a good reason for everything we yeah, do. Yeah, that's right. But anyway, he says maybe a weekly or monthly future program with yourselves and Tim covering each of the Ten Commandments and how we may be blindly committing those sins and transgressions mm. without realising. It's a really good idea, actually. Very, very good. Yeah. Um, I've got one here from Margaret who says, Today I've been in touch with Philip Day's company. We so appreciated Felicity. And it was so good to get the repeats whilst you were away on holiday. I am actually now going to run Felicity's series, like starting with programme one, just once a week. Um, she says... Um, would it be possible to bring Philip Day back? I mentioned Revelation on the phone and Philip's manager, Steve, said it all finished at COVID and he seems to think Philip would be willing to return if he was so invited. I'll try him again. I did email him. I didn't get a reply. That was a long time ago. So maybe we'll uh, email him again because he is an absolute, has a wealth of knowledge on um, keep well. Well, get well stay generally. well basically yes, absolutely well, just general bible knowledge uh, philip is very good at uh, that's right yeah, not just different. yeah not just um yeah help. it was just because mm. we mm. weren't into the conspiracy theories that's all i mean we just mm -hmm. yeah. but exactly. we we didn't fall out we just no uh, you know just didn't agree <laughs> well, i think it was very very hard when so many of our viewers had lost family members who had died of covid and then we had we had people yeah. saying it doesn't exist they were incredibly upset even lost some of our presenters as yeah. well nearly lost due to me. covid nearly lost you absolutely mm. that's right so yeah, would you have missed me darling i would have missed oh, you really? i oh, would good. have missed that's you. nice to know okay <laughs> <laughs> well, we're missing you as well, so keep your emails coming. In fact, I think we're in the last few minutes, are we not, of this particular live show? Oh, one okay, minute. Okay, so Michael, you can have the last word. He says, nice to see you both. <clears throat> You're f you think we are very near end times now with Russia in Ukraine, NATO, the West opposing Russia. In the book of Ezekiel, chapter 38, mm. talks about Gog and Magog. Geographically, many scholars say is Russia and Turkey invading Israel, Persia or Iran. Now it's mentioned too. Mm. We also have North Korea joining Russia and China too, beginning to look really dangerous place to be on this earth right now. And you said it, Michael. But yeah, uh, very good. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. so, um, so what do you want to do? Well, I was just going to say that tomorrow you and Tim are on our mornings. And? And then tomorrow the evening. evening, you and Tim will be on the late, the late show. show. That's right. Yes. Yeah, okay, so so it's can, early and late. So I can just <laughs> sit back and uh, and actually watch the program. So uh, far more, far more my forte. The late show is not my forte. Okay. To finish on, uh, who it. are the chosen? Well, those that accept Christ as their, uh, I suppose their, first of all, the, the sacrificial lamb and also the fact that he is the Messiah and he is going to be the one who actually heads up that government and we are invited into his kingdom and may his kingdom come soon and until then we'll meet again in the morning. Okay.